You that are watching this episode, there are seven objects in your household. We know God is speaking through this episode today. You need to get rid of those objects. And I know you're thinking, Gabe, I'm a Christian. Gabe, my dad, he's a pastor. Gabe, my mom prays in tongues. Gabe, I've seen your episodes before. Gabe, I love Jesus. Yes, that's great. And that's exactly why you need to know how to get those objects removed. And you need to know the specific items that need to be removed. We know that you'll be surprised when you hear the last one. You know what's funny, really? I surprised myself when I heard the last one. I had an object in my apartment that I needed to get rid of. Stick around till the end and you'll see what object it was. Pastor Mike Signorelli, so thankful you are here. I'm so glad to be here. We're gonna have fun today. We're talking about this because the Holy Spirit is reminding me of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, that says, do not let the devil outwit you, for we are not unaware of his schemes. And there's many of you watching right now, you are being outwitted by the devil and you are completely unaware of his schemes. And so I'm a pastor based out of New York City right now on a mission to reveal to you how Satan is currently outwitting you. People are hungry for the supernatural. Some of you watching may have friends and family members that are like, oh, I don't want to hear about Jesus, but they may want to hear about demons because they feel a dark presence or an entity in their own personal life. Sometimes proving the existence of the devil proves the existence of God. Yes. And so people have this awareness. I'm here in New York City where I ask people, do you feel like you're living under a curse? Do you feel like you watch other people get ahead in life, but you never get ahead? They're like, you know what? I do feel that way. And I'm like, again, to talk about the gospel, if we will just say, I don't want a form of godliness that denies the power thereof. I want Acts chapter one, verse eight, that says, after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power to be my witnesses. What do you say to every Christian watching this that is thinking to themselves, hey, I'm saved. I've given my life to Christ. I don't have any, Satan doesn't have any place in my life. Like it's like going out to your backyard right now and saying, look, there's no insects in my backyard <laughs> because you didn't get down on your knees and start moving the blades of grass and oh. turning over the rocks. Here's the thing. Every military in the planet wears fatigues. Why? Because when you have camouflage on, there is a military advantage to hiddenness. And that's just known. So if Satan is fighting you and, and you're in the army of God, he is going to come in the form of fatigues. He's going to be camouflaged. Matter of fact, the Bible says that Satan actually comes as masquerading around as an angel of light. So he's always going to come into your life in a form that you do not recognize him as the devil. If you're like, well, the devil's not operating in my life, get down on your knees and do a closer examination. What's the number one item that people need to look out for? It's going to jump right into it. Number yeah. one, look out for dream cat. And let me just tell you why. This is in no way, shape, or form uh, to be discriminatory against Native Americans. We, we love everybody. We love all cultures. But specifically, dream catchers, and the reason why I say that they're probably in your home, it's not just decoration. There's this long-held belief that they catch your nightmares and they stop you from having bad dreams. But the Bible, whether it's in the book of Deuteronomy, book of Ed uh, Exodus, or in the New Testament, has a strict prohibition against any any type of witchcraft. And so dream catchers are one of those things that show up. People get dream catchers tattoos. They have dream catchers in their house, not realizing it's more than decoration. It is, it is a form of witchcraft. And some people, and you can see this over and over again when I teach these types of things, tell me, Pastor Mike, my nightmares increased when I got it. And I didn't realize till you just said it, I need to get that thing out of my house, destroy it and remove it. If they have a dream catcher, what do they need to do? I would say get rid of it, but also go back to the point in their life where it entered and say, what was happening in my life when this, when, when this dream catcher? Because oftentimes, again, what witchcraft is, is counterfeit comfort. It's like saying, you know, see, the Bible says, well, Jesus said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's going to be your comforter. So when you have a nightmare, if you're raising your family up in righteousness, you're going to actually say, come on, let's invite the Holy Spirit into this situation. He's the true comforter. But instead what happens, oh, here's a dream catcher. And so I, that's why I actually have such a heart of compassion for people that have dream catchers and different items mm -hmm. that we're going to be discussing because it really represents a counterfeit comfort. Let's give people the real thing. Well, that's so good. We're not coming against people here. We love you so much that we're telling you these things. That's and it. we believe in you guys so much. We know that those items that you have are not who you really are. Your true identity is in Christ Jesus. And if you have these items, don't get mad at us because we're telling you the truth. In fact, you could say thank you because we're helping you be the best uh, child of God that God has created you to be. What's, what's the item number two? Number two, and I want to make sure that I communicate this clearly so everybody please pay attention right now. 
It's sage. But let me, let me just talk about this for a second. Do not go and throw away the sage that you're using for cooking. Many people grow sage in their backyard, in their garden. I'm not talking about using sage in a culinary way for food. I'm, I'm talking about ritualistic, the ritualistic burning of sage. Many people burn sage in hopes that it's going to rid their house of evil spirits, okay? okay. And th again, that is a counterfeit comfort. Why? Because sometimes demons will even pretend like they left after you burn sage to continue to endorse that practice. Mm -hmm. Come on, we've got to be wise. Don't let the enemy outwit us. And you'll be like, wow, all this evil activity in my home, all this demonic activity, it just went away after I burned sage. Yes, don't be foolish. They're playing you. But I'm telling you, burning sage actually increases demonic activity over the long haul. And I have so many stories that people have told me where we've had to take them through deliverance and get free after that practice. But here's the thing, Gabe, you have entrepreneurs who are like, we're spiritual. And part of our success as, as Gen Z or millennial entrepreneurs is burning sage. Come on, it's going to help you. And it's like, don't fall for the trap of the enemy. Everything Satan does, he perverts. Yes. He takes God's blessing of the earth of creation and he, he sells it under his own manner and under his own success. And that's why you find even, guys, why do you think that people who have accomplished everything in this life on earth and they're the biggest billionaires, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, why do you look at them and you see the most depressed man on the earth? Why do you look at them and you actually find they have no wealth? Because mm -hmm. that's exactly what Satan does. He says you have wealth, you actually have zero because on the inside you have nothing. I was thinking about how Satan took Jesus up to the mountaintop and basically yeah. said, look, I'll give you all this. Satan is in the blessing business too. Yes. He's the prince of the power of the air. And so he has a certain amount of authority and dominion in the earth. Now, Christ actually is seated above every name, every principality, every power. But it's like, yeah, the devil's in the blessing business too. People say, oh man, I burnt sage and it helped me and it worked. Of course it did because Satan is endorsing that practice. Practice, and he's creating that illusion that gets you deeper and deeper into the new age and demonic practices. Well, that's so good. And you guys, I, I can see this viewer right now. You're thinking to yourself, oh, Gabe, I haven't met those two first items. Gabe, I'm good. I'm going to scroll off this video. Listen, you're going to want to stick around to the end of this episode because we're going to tell you a last item that I, I am almost confident that you have in your life. In fact, I'm almost confident you've had a ton of it in your life. So don't just pridefully think that the items we're describing to you are just for some specific types of people who just get in this area. No, we've got to be open to hearing this truth. And so, but no, you brought up such a good point. You know, Adam, when he ate that apple, gave Adam was given authority over the earth. Adam was, was given the blessing, but he gave it off to Satan. And as soon as Satan got that, power. It's why he's described in 2 Corinthians as the God, little g, of this earth. And so, and then he just sells what he has, though, as if he's God, because he exalts himself as God. And, and guys, when you feel like you just have to have that success, you just have to have that money, you just have to have your own ambition, that's exactly what Satan wants you to do. Because if you're serving yourself as God, he's one. If you're serving yourself as the one that you need to succeed for, Satan's one. And the, uh, Thank you, Lord. I just got in this heart. So many of you, there's been teachers that have so told you that you need to go to college and you need to go in this direction because you need to look like the rest of everyone else and you need to do better than your parents and you need to make more money than your parents and you need to be just like the teachers. God says to you today, be what I've called you to be and I will ultimately bless you more than you could ever imagine. And God will purely bless you. I just really sense that in my heart. Guys, listen, do not listen to the lies of the enemy concerning God's plan for your life, concerning what you should do with your life, about your career that you choose, about the school you go to. Do what God says and he will bless you. Bring us into, bring us into item three, Pastor. Gabe, this is so powerful. Lives are being transformed right now. Yeah. Right up off what you said, many of you watching right now are afraid of your future. You're afraid what's going to happen next. And that's why you may have fallen prey to tarot cards. Mm. But I want I want you to be wise. Don't think about just a physical deck of cards. Think about your phone. Think about there, there's a lot of people who are consulting the psychic realm within their phone. Maybe there's an app. Maybe there's, I mean, hashtag witch talk. And there's mm. people practicing practicing tarot card readings, even in live streams. And maybe you've scrolled and you saw yourself watching that longer than you should have, or you've done something that right now the Holy Spirit's revealing to you. But again, what Pastor Mike, what's so wrong with tarot cards? Let me tell you what's wrong. You have a loving heavenly father 
who wants to teach you all things, reveal all things through the Holy Spirit, who actually wants to give you prophetic vision for your future, who wants you to be excited for your future that he has planned out for you. But when you push all that aside and say, you know what, God, I just want to hear it through tarot cards. I, I just want to hear it the easy way. You've accepted a false counterfeit. And um, many of you just need to right now throw those tarot cards away, delete the apps on your phone, unfollow the people on Witch Talk or whatever platform that you're watching and just say, God, I want to hear your voice because you're the one that's ultimately going to lead me into righteousness, into peace and actually true, like you said, true prosperity, tr the, the kind of future that it's like, this is better than what I could have planned on my own. So tarot cards, and here's the thing though, Gabe, um, I've got two daughters of my own. I've got a 15 year old and I have an eight year old. And I am so grieved to find that even within these national retailers here in the United States, you actually, you know, you'll go and see uh, little, you know, hair bows and things in the, the impulse buy section while you're getting up to the register. And then all of a sudden you'll see tarot cards in the new age. It's just infiltrating people's lives and they're not even aware of how demonic it truly really is. Mm, no, that's such a good point give no ground and you know the holy spirit is just convicting me right now he's been talking to me recently about when we buy a product from a company mm -hmm. and now granted there is no perfect company guys granted there's uh <laughs> there's always going to be broken companies out there that we almost uh are buying from but if you are buying a product that just has on the little back of the cereal box a little tarot card it just it, it's a great oreo but just on the on the back of it or it's a great laptop but the the company on the back of the web laptop just has a little tarot card listen guys give no ground um I'm just reminded, you know, we, we, we like to casually say concerning the things we buy, we're like, oh no, it, like that's just on the back. It's just in the corner. Like it's, it's not a big deal. Like you're being religious. Like you're being blah, 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 blah. No, listen, you're being watchful over your house. You're not letting Satan get in your house. If you will stand firm. So guys, uh, don't give any ground here. Don't, don't give any room. Don't give any, uh, wiggle room here for tarot cards. Yeah. Well, listen, Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse 26. And if you're a Christian watching this right now, you got to understand the heart of God for you. God doesn't change. And so even though this is the old Testament, it's very clear. It says, neither shall you bring an abomination or an idol into your house, lest you become an accursed thing like it, but you will utterly detest and abhor it for it is an accursed thing. So in Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse 26, I mean, God is literally, literally saying there are items that are cursed and do not bring those cursed items into your house because you will become like that item. And that's really what this is like. Whatever you worship, whatever you put all of your hope in, you become like that thing, which wow. is so, so dangerous. You want me to jump into the next one? Yeah. Yeah. Go. Okay. The next one is evil books. And I know that a lot of times Christians do get judged. Oh, okay. I get it. You want us to burn our books. You're just overly zealous. No. But what I am saying is that you become like the thing that you worship. You become like the thing that you bring into your house. Gabe, I know that we talk a lot about pornography, but also there's books that, that are inappropriate and fantasy based books and books that mm -hmm. cause Christians to go into this fantasy realm and no one knows about it. And someone's getting convicted right now while I'm telling this, but also I, I had a guy who had a paranormal experience where, and it was a weird thing, but there was a light switch in his hallway that would get switched on and off. And he could audibly hear click, click. He'd go into the shower. He'd hear it click and it would turn off. He'd go into his room. He'd hear it click and it would come on. And he was really, really freaked out by it. And he was like, Hey, can you come by my house? And can you pray, pray, whatever, just a blessing over my house. Can you help me get free? I don't know what this is. As I was driving to his house, the Holy Spirit spoke to me just clear as day and said, there is a book in his house. He opened the door. And so I, um, you know, spiritually he opened the door. So I called him and I said, Hey, I'm on my way right now, but I feel like there's a book in your house that the Holy Spirit is going to make you aware of. All of a sudden he was like, I have chills all over me right now. He goes, I'm looking at the book on the bookshelf right now. I know exactly what book you're talking about. And it was a book about world religions, including witchcraft. And he had actually read the book from an intellectual perspective. So he wasn't, he wasn't reading it to worship, but he was just like, oh, I'm curious, whatever. But he was like, but there were definitely parts of this book that I read out loud. 
I experimented with. And I was like, yes, that opened the door. I got chills even saying it right now. That yeah. opened the door to the demonic in your life. And whatever demon that he had opened the door toward, it was so powerful that it was even manipulating like physical things in his, you know, he had something knocked over. I mean, it was literally like a Hollywood version yeah. of a poltergeist type experience. Mm -hmm. And not everybody will experience something that crazy, but it's an extreme example of, yes, it's not just having the book, owning the book. It's reading the book out loud, the book having power over you, and then opening up the doors to the demonic. I really hear this strong in my heart. Many of you that are in school, you've you there have been there have been teachers that have pushed demonic books upon you and you've been just just discovering walking around in your library listen and they'll tell you there's nothing wrong with it it's just learning it's just understanding it's just observing there is no such thing as observing blindly and sitting on a fence as you just watch kindly there is no such thing and last time i checked pastor mike jesus when he was on this earth he didn't say to himself oh let me just go uh pay $12 so I can get into a library and so that I'll have all access books to the, to, to demons. And then I just, then I can have a monthly subscription to demons. <laughs> he did say that. Uh, he didn't give any place when, when he cast that demon out of the man that, and the demon went into the pigs, he didn't say, Oh, uh, let me watch this demon for an hour because this is a really interesting time guys. Let me just watch him and let me, you know, just enjoy that. No, Guys, he doesn't play any games with demons and neither should we. It comes to romance. It's interesting how Satan will use these romance fantasies as well. Um, these, these, and not, yeah. just, not just pornographic, but so many guys and girls get into these romance movies, get into these romance shows that are not true romance. And God says to you today, if you want to understand the true love that emanates from his being, if you want to understand the marriage that he's called you to have, you will never get a hold of that if you stay focused on what Satan offers as love, on what Satan offers as romance. And um, guys, these, these, these shows, these uh, rom-coms, these, uh, these, these things that just get you so enticed and they get you so engaged in, and they're not godly, they're pulling you away. And you're giving a place to Satan for any relationship you will ever have. You've got to cut it off. Sure, it may feel entertaining. You might get the dopamine rush. You won't be having a dopamine rush when you find that your relationships aren't working out. When you're saying to yourself, oh, he doesn't love me like the show loved me. He doesn't love me like the, like the actor. She doesn't look like the, she doesn't look like the beach girl. Are you kidding me? That's what we're facing in today's society. Pastor Mike, bring us into the next object. Yeah, um, okay. The next object, and it, they just creep into our lives, religious statues for luck, for blessings, or for decoration. Yeah. And what Satan has done has normalized these religious statues to the point where we bring them into our home and we're like, look, it's Buddha. He's so cute. Look, it's the lucky it's, it's really, I mean, look, you know, it's like, and, because again, and I know that if you're Buddhist and you're watching this right now, I just need you to understand that, that what my savior taught is that he was the only way to heaven. Yeah. And so whatever religious background or affiliation you have, if you want me to, if you want me to respect yours, you must also respect what my savior said, Jesus, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth. There is no way to the Father unless you come through me. And I know that that's incredibly offensive, but to me, Buddha is not cute. Behind that little cute statue of Buddha is actually a spirit. And I, and I know, again, I get, I get in trouble for saying these kinds of things, hey, but go ahead, go it ahead. presents itself as luck or a blessing, right? Mm. Like you actually see this, uh, there's like a cat figure that, where the paw goes up and down and you'll go into, you know, different neighborhoods here in New York city and they're selling those figures, but it, it's not, it, it presents itself as cute or like a lucky rabbit's foot, which somebody said, how ironic the rabbit lost its foot. It obviously was not lucky at all. <laughs> But but we have these like the lucky rabbit's foot. We have the the Buddha statue. We have the Krishna statue. We have the whatever these forms from hin, hin, different forms of Hindu gods that we have. And we're like, oh, look. And here's another one. The aesthetic. Oh, look at my room. You know, for the teenagers watching right now, my room is so aesthetic. Life is life, you know, like look at the, the vibes in my room. And they've got like all these like trinket gods and stuff. But really behind that is a demonic infrastructure that's taking you away from Christ. 
It's a form of power, but it's not the greatest power, which is the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Now what? You can go on my channel. You can watch hours and hours and hours of me casting demons out of people, expelling demons all around the world. And I'm telling you, I got chills right now getting ready to say this. There are people who are like, Pastor Mike, I have a, a ghost of a little girl in my apartment and she, I can hear her say these phrases. I'm like, it's not the ghost of a little girl. The Bible actually teaches us that it's appointed to all of us once to live and then to die. Upon yep. death, it's heaven or it's hell. There yep. are no trapped souls of human beings on this planet, but there are demons trying to convince you that they're a little girl. So next time you hear that voice, I dare you to say, I take authority over you. You're a demonic spirit. Uh, you know, and you will all immediately that it, the persona will shift. Uh -huh. Oh, I got chills all over me right now. Uh -huh. and, because what will happen is you'll expose what the devil's doing. So these religious statues and it really, if you go back to ancient Israel, the reason why I read Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse 26 is because ancient Israel was also bringing statues into their homes, was also doing these things. And they also thought it's cute. It's cool. It's aesthetic. And the Lord was like, no, it's demonic. And they needed to get free from that. It could represent a spiritual uh, bondage, and it could be holding you back from breaking through to your next level. When something good happens to you, do not ever say, oh, I'm just lucky. The word uh, lucky, obviously we're using the word to tell you to get rid of it right now, but be watchful over the words that you say. How would you feel if you gave your life for someone, if there is a bullet heading for, let's just say your, either your brother or your sister or your mother, and a bullet was heading for them and you loved them so much that you stepped in that place and you took the bullet, but they didn't even know it. They, let's just say for a moment that you were invisible and they didn't even know that you died. And then you, you understood what they said afterwards. You were there and you heard the voice recording of your brother or your sister saying to themselves, oh, wow, I didn't get shot that day. I guess I'm just lucky. I guess I'm, I'm just lucky. How would you feel after you'd given your life for that person, after you'd given everything for them, for them to just say, I'm lucky. That's, that's one of the saddest things we could possibly say. And I'm not telling you this to condemn you or shame you. Listen, I've said the word luck way too many times. I've said that phrase way too many times when God was blessing me. I said it was just random. And I'll be the first to say that I've been convicted of that, guys. The things we're leading you in, we, we're leading you an example. We're not telling you, coming down at you, telling you that you're a horrible person. No, we're leading an example because if you cut that word out of your life and said, say, I'm blessed. Oh, I just got blessed today. You'll start to be more thankful and then you'll actually see God more do more in your life. Um, he that's faithful in the little is rewarded with more. Not oh, he that's faithful in saying that he's lucky. <laughs> um, uh Pastor, uh, what's next? Okay, so this is going to really challenge many people, but evil jewelry, jewelry that's associated with the demonic, a jewelry that's okay. There's several items, and you know, people have the they wear the evil eye pendant, and that's been handed down through generations. It was given as a gift. Uh, people have jewelry that was even given to them by a loved one, and it could be a romantic partner. But what that represents is control, manipulation. Mm -hmm. Like even the the and here's the thing: you don't think about it that way. But it's like, did they buy you that jewelry jewelry because they love you, or because they wanted to control and manipulate? But the Bible says that witchcraft is as manipulation, domination, and control, the spirit of witchcraft. And so it's like, they may not have like didn't done a ritual or a seance or a hex or a curse over you, but they were constantly manipulating and controlling you, which reveals, yes, it was demonic, even in the form of jewelry. And so you have that. Then you also have jewelry that's connected to different uh, religions and different traditions. And it, and according to the Bible, now listen, I'm a Bible teacher. So if you're, if you're watching this right now, this is not my opinion. I don't have an opinion. My opinion is the scriptures. And when once I became a Christian, 
Christian, I, I it, that is greater than being an American. That's greater. Whatever other identity I have has to surrender to the Bible. So if you're watching this right now, and you're like, this dude told me I can't have this and this and this kind of jewelry. No, what I'm saying is use wisdom, but use biblical wisdom. And when you look at the, the scriptures, I mean, he, God literally said, don't even keep it get rid of it. You know, don't it's, there's a very strict prohibition. Why? And this is why I want to go a little bit deeper on this evil jewelry. It's there's two reasons why one is because you're putting your hope in it. There's people who rub these charms. They, they, it's like they fixate on them. Oh, I have to wear this before I do this big thing. And so you're putting your hope in that. My hope is on this solid foundation of, of Jesus Christ. Like all else is sinking sand. And then number two, it's because there's an emotional connection to it that could possibly be holding you back. And by getting rid of that jewelry, you're also uh, you're cutting off that emotional connection and freeing yourself from control and manipulation. So it's either a form of control, manipulation, this emotional investment that was inappropriate, or it could be connected to paganism. It could be connected to another world religion that you need to break your, your connection to that thing. We're not telling you that all jewelry needs to be correct. You need to throw away your earrings right now. We're telling you, watch over the reason you have it. And even as you're talking about this, I'm reminded, you know, I actually uh, hadn't heard you talk about this before. Um, but it's funny because so I had a past relationship that really wasn't good and ended, you know, it wasn't well. And I was I was keeping a, a piece of, of necklace that I that I had from it. And I was keeping it for, I don't know, a couple months afterwards. And the Holy Spirit really rose up inside me strong and said, get rid of that. Mm. And it was it, like, it wasn't it, like, it, it, I just knew I was like, I'm getting rid of that. And, wow. um, and uh, it, it was kind of like, do you guys know how, when you know you're supposed to do something and you keep hearing the Holy Spirit, say it, say it, say it, say it, but you just kind of put it on the back burner because the Holy Spirit is not a yeller guys. He's, he's the spirit of life and peace. And he, he is gentle and he is a friend. He only gives us what we let him give us. He only, we'll only hear him if we open our ears. Um, anyways, I finally just opened my ears up to it, threw it away. But I, I had never heard uh, really you talk about this, but I just knew I was like, I need to get rid of that. So you're so, you're so accurate about that. Wow. And, um, and like you said, it's not everything. I mean, yeah. I, I, like, for example, I, I bought jewelry for my daughters sure. and it's a very significant moment when I, as a father, but again, there's a big difference between that or manipulation, that or a religious connection. Right. And it's just about, listen, this is not a, we're not giving you a list of do's and don'ts. We are giving you biblical wisdom and then you should have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. That's confirming that wisdom as well. That's so true. Guys, think about it like this. Uh, anyone that wants to be fit and healthy and you want to tell my guys out there and girls that want to gain some muscle and look ripped in the gym. If I sat here and told you the seven workouts that would make you look ripped, you wouldn't say to me, oh my goodness, Gabe, you're just telling me things I need to do. Gabe, you're just telling me like, I, you're being so religious, Gabe. Are you kidding me? Like, I don't want to hear anything of what you have to say. No, you would say, wow, thanks. I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> Why? Because guys, the steps we're giving you are helping you be exactly who you're supposed to be on this earth. And last time I checked, ain't nobody got time for a 400 pound couch sitter. And that's not who you are. Now, if, if you are 400 pounds sitting on the couch, I love you. I'm telling you this because I know you're coming out because I know you're done with that life. Come on. And, uh, and we're not shaming you. We're bringing you out. All right. Wait, uh, what number item was that? Is that the six one? Or that was the six, yeah. Six? All right. We finally here at the last item. I know we still got some of you out here that are like, okay, Gabe, checkbox. I didn't have that. I don't have that. I don't have that. I don't have that. Well, here you go. Now that's really test you here. Pastor, tell them. Come on. Number seven is a soul tie. What does that mean? It's not a physical object, but rather something that your soul is connected to. And sometimes that's represented by an object. Let me give you an, a classic example. There are people who come up to me all the times with old photographs or even photos in their phone that they refuse to delete. And they're like, man, this person abused me. This person was toxic. This person canceled my destiny for that season and got me totally off track. But I can't 
cannot throw this picture away. I cannot delete this picture and I don't know why. And I tell them it's because it represents a soul tie. You're, it's a form of worship. It's devotion and it's competing with God. The Bible says you can't have two masters because you'll either love the one or you and hate the other. And so it could be, you could have soul tie objects all around your house right now where you're like, man, there's really nothing wrong with this hoodie, but this hoodie was my boyfriend's hoodie. And I need to throw it in the trash because he's not my boyfriend anymore. And I've been able to get rid of him physically, but not the soul tie that's connected to him. And I need to move on with my life. And so is that hoodie a cursed object? Not necessarily, but it could represent you living under the curse. Maybe you did things inappropriately with that boyfriend. You gave yourself away or to that girlfriend. Maybe you did things that really broke the heart of God and stepped outside of your covenant with God. And those objects represent that season of your life. Listen, God says, I make all things new. God says that therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so he says, your past is as far as the East is from the West. So this is your sign. You're watching this video by divine appointment because you're not just going to get free from the objects. God doesn't care about that. You could throw them in the garbage. It's actually about saying God never removes without replacing. So yeah, he's going to remove tarot cards, but he's going to replace it with prophetic vision. He's going to remove dream catchers, but he's going to give you your dream and your destiny. He's going to remove an evil book and replace it with the word of God, with scripture. He's going to remove evil jewelry and he's going to adorn you with his presence and with his anointing and his power. I feel the power of God right yeah. now. And yeah. so if you throw away that hoodie, God's going to replace a boyfriend with a husband. Come on, somebody. Okay. He's going to replace a girlfriend with a wife. Like God, that's uh -huh. how God actually does. He never removes without replacing. So there's your mic drop moment. Come on. Hopefully you're getting free during Come this. On. Yes, right Come now. On. Hey, listen, you know what, guys? You're witnessing this in real time. As pastor had been talking, God was speaking to me about one last item that I still had for my past relationship, uh, my, my past girlfriend had got me a wallet that I just kept around. I, I liked the wallet and I was telling myself, no, 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 it's not related. It's not related. It's not related. But it kept coming up on the inside of me. And guys, here's my wallet. What I'm doing right now is I'm throwing away this wallet. Wow. I'm ordering a new wallet as you are speaking. Guys, I'm leading. I, I, am, I, am, I am only telling you the things that I'm following myself. And I know Pastor Mike, you as well are. And so here I am throwing away a wallet that I like, but we got to get rid of all the junk in our lives. And also, I, I hear this strong in my heart. Um, there, are, there are many of you that still follow a person that you attached a soul tie to, that you wanted uh, guys out there, you made, you wanted that girl. And so you just followed her with that hope she'd follow you back. You just, and you started messaging her and then you had this past. Listen, unless God told you to initiate a relationship with that woman, what are you doing? You're wasting your time. You're devaluing yourself. Um, I, I hear many, uh, there's many follows that you need to hit that unfollow button and you need to do it right now as we're speaking. Don't wait. You can return to this live stream. Go do it right now. <laughs> um, um, there's, there's many, uh, there's many objects and there's many, many of you, you keep going back to the same digital place. You keep going back to that show. There's many of you, when you feel alone, when you feel depressed, when you, when your anxiety hits about that certain situation, you go to a place. I don't know if it's a uh, your computer. I don't know if it's a it's a if it's a friend. Even it, I don't know if it's a it's a certain location. Listen, God says He asks you, "Will you go to Him instead of that? Will you? Will you? That has become an idol in your life. That has become your God. Listen, no person, no thing, no internet location, no direct message can ever fulfill your needs like God can. So, um, Pastor. How, how can we respond right now? Lead us in, in the next steps, this prayer to, to really lead us in the next direction. Come on, many of you have been longing for a new season. This is it right now. And I'm gonna pray for you. And I, as I begin to pray, the Holy Spirit is going to work with me. We're going to partner together. He's going to reveal things to you. Some of you may start crying. Some of you may be led to different objects and things and you throw them away and you're like, wow, I just feel so much better. But let's just pray right now. Heavenly Father, I pray for this precious person who's watching right now, who so desperately needs freedom. I yeah. just break every bondage off of them now in the yeah. name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I sever every connection to their past. And Father, I thank you that they are 
are free right now. If you're hearing me pray right now, you just need to use your own words and say, Heavenly Father, wash me clean. Heavenly Father, I repent for all of these objects and things that I've replaced you with. Come on, you could just say with your own words right now. And as you begin to say it, Romans chapter 10, verse nine says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart and you will receive Christ and be saved. So right now, God's doing the work. He's doing the work right now. You are not your past. You may have made some bad decisions, brought these things into your life, but the truth has come to you today. And the Bible says, and the truth will set you free. So Father, set them free yeah. right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And, and, and y'all listen, you know, the Lord just spoke through me. This is really funny because I was not expecting this to happen. I'm here cleaning out my wallet and I'm, I'm cleaning out every section. I'm cleaning out every area. Guys, how many, mm, how many of you, if, if I had a thousand dollars in this wallet and I had just one last section that I didn't clean out and I just left that and I said, oh no, I, I still want to keep that. I still want to, I'm going to put it in the trash, but like, I'm going to be able to find it later in the garage system. And I'm going to still have that one item in the wallet. That would be absolutely stupid. I would just have lost a thousand dollars of my own personal uh, value, not value, but my own personal, what I, what I, what I have. Guys, listen, this wallet is a representation of your life. Do not hold any areas back from God. Maybe it's an area of your most shame. Maybe it's an area of your biggest embarrassment of the thing you could never talk to God about. Maybe it's an area that you just, uh, you just, you wanted to keep to yourself. Listen, listen, when you marry God, when you marry Jesus, there is nothing you keep from him. Full marriage, full relationship means you're all into him. No more side chicks, guys. No more, no more crevices that you don't give to God. You got to clean out oh. all areas of your life and get rid of every single thing that you need to get that, that get rid of every single demonic influence and item in your life today, guys. And, uh, but, and then you take that and then it's in the trash and you ain't picking that. Once it's in the trash, it ain't, you ain't picking it back up. Come on, somebody. Hey, <laughs> love it. So good. Oh, it's funny. The whole episode telling people the items they need to remove and you have an item yourself. I mean, honestly, no, I, that, I, that's how I get all my content is literally I live it first and then just preach it down the line. That's what I'm saying. And I was, I was literally telling myself before this episode, I was like, all right, I don't have this. I don't have this. I don't have this. I don't have this. I'm good. I'm good. And then as you're speaking, the Lord says, Gabe, Gabe, I'm like, Lord, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm Lord, I'm recording right now. Lord, I'm trying to. Not the wallet. <laughs> Lord, Lord, I'm trying to focus right now. Can, can you help me focus here? <laughs> That's so good, man. That, that Honestly, I love that. Uh, that is too funny. Um, so, guys, uh, before you leave, there are three more items that that uh, Pastor wants to give you. I've tagged his channel in the title. Go click his channel right now. Go find out those three items and uh, be sure to go subscribe to him. We want to support our brothers who have humbled themselves, who are doing what God wants them to do. Guys, you can trust him. I want all of you to go subscribe to him right now and go watch that video about how you can find out the three more items. He recently posted it on his channel. Just scroll through on his channel. You'll find it right there. Uh, he's tagged in the description and uh, we will see you guys there. And uh, if you live in New York City, where can they go? V1 Church. Yeah, if you guys go to www.v1.church, you can see times, location, services, and subscribe to my YouTube channel because we actually do church live on Sundays there as well. So I'll see you guys there. Praise God. We'll see you guys there. Pastor, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Gabe.